Welcome to the Self-Awareness and Self-Compassion Podcast, formerly known as the Full Spectrum Feeling Podcast. I'm your host, Blaise Schwaller, life coach, mom, and former tattoo artist. I help people heal their past, speak their truth, and love the lives that they're living now. Join me here every week for conversations on how to live an imperfect but fully engaged life that embraces all the feels so that you can stretch into your best life while enjoying the you that's here right now. Hey, it's Blaze. Welcome back to Full Spectrum Feeling. This week, I want to talk about beauty standards and aging and mortality. It's been on my mind and it's something I think I've mentioned a few times in the podcast. And as I'm getting older, certainly it's been on my mind. And I know there's entire industries built around this whole concept of being beautiful, being young. Like in particular, it's like being young in what I've seen anyway, that we don't celebrate the beauty of old people. We celebrate old people who continue to look young and that's very much praised. And the message is not lost on me. And it makes me notice (laughs) that I'm like, Oh, there's wrinkles. Oh, I like my skin is uneven. Yeah. Is that bad? Like, Oh, my hands are looking old and like lumpy and like my veins are really big now and that's not great. And then I'm like, Oh, the texture of my skin on my arms is different. And the way my tattoos show up, they're different now. And I don't know that I like that at all. Like, I don't know how to change it. And it's interesting to me that my instinct is I should probably try to change it. And then I really stopped and thought, well, why, why do I want to change it? And I'm like, is it to empower myself? I'm like, well, why do I think it's empowering to change my body? That's just, you know, it's living. It's cool. Like I'm, I'm functioning actually pretty well. Why am I disappointed in the way that I look? Oh, interesting. Like, oh, skin, it shouldn't sag. Well, who says it shouldn't sag? Apparently every beauty magazine, popular magazine, like show that we watch shows everybody being so beautiful and radiant, even into their old age. And, you know, they take off the makeup and you're like, oh, there are all the wrinkles. There's all the like reality of dull skin and cracks and everything. So what we're looking at constantly is like this big cover up of what humans really look like. And we've taken it to be truth because it's easy to take that as truth. (laughs) We'd like it to be true because everyone just assumes that, I mean, it's pleasant to look at youth. Okay. Young people can be pretty. That's great. Why aren't we celebrating the beauty of middle age, (laughs) the beauty of being old? And I'm guilty of it too, where I'm like, Oh, do I find like people my own age really beautiful? Do I find them attractive? And what does that say about me? (laughs) What does it say about society? What am I being taught and what am I absorbing? And then shit, what's my daughter absorbing about all this? Like it worries me that I don't want her to grow up thinking that she doesn't want to become like me. And then her grandmother and her grandparents like don't become old, except we're all going to become old. It happens to us. And I don't want her to see like the panic that we seem to have about it or the shame that seems to be around it. Like I see a lot of people like, Oh, I wouldn't want to go to the beach. I need to cover myself up. And it's not thinking like, Oh, I just want to cover up because I don't want sun damage. It's like, I don't want anyone to see that I'm wrinkly and have hair, God forbid, you know, like just stupid things. And I wonder so much about that. And can I change it for myself at this age? How have I been able to change it for myself? And am I truly comfortable or am I just telling myself I should be more comfortable with myself as I am? So these are questions that I have. Um, I remember as like in puberty, right? Like the, the most stressful time where your body's changing and like, oh, I have to wear a weird bikini thing now because I have like weird little breast buds and there's hair. And I think we went camping. So I went with my dad and my brothers and we went camping and I like forgot to bring a razor or something. And I think I was probably like 12 or 13. Like I wasn't that old. And I remember being very much made fun of by my brothers. And I don't know if my dad was all like, Oh, you need to like get a razor and take care of that. And it was just made very obvious that women having armpit hair was disgusting. 
how could I think to like bear my armpits with armpit hair in them? And that really stuck with me for so much of my life where I'm like, Ooh, like, I guess it was like wrong for me to just have existed for a few days camping and my hair grew out and I had nothing to change that. So there it was. And then now I'm gross and I'm laughed at and I'm very uncomfortable and I don't know, like, what could I have done differently? And the answer is not a goddamn thing. Like that's what our bodies do. Like the, we grow hair. It's okay. And yet there's this opinion about it. And I took it to heart and was like, Oh God, I should never like have hairy armpits or legs or anything because that would be terrible. Clearly that's disgusting. And men hate that. That's my message with that. So I spent years like shaving and, you know, I felt like I would shave and then I would have like razor burn everywhere, which honestly I felt was uglier than the hair initially was. And it's painful and it's awful. And then you just have to keep shaving because the hair just keeps coming. And there's these horrible bumps. And same with my armpits. Like, I don't know, my hair grows funny, I guess, like all in a little swirl pattern everywhere. So it's like a little hurricane in my armpits. And then you have to go on different directions. And if you don't, then there's like ingrown hairs and then those would get awful. So then it's like having a horrible zit or something in your armpit. It's terrible. And like the shame around that. And I hit a point where I'm like, oh, all of the fashion that everyone's wearing is like these sleeveless short things, which are nice to wear because it's hot and I don't want to have to wear heavy clothes. But yet there's this, I don't want you to see my bumpy, gross armpit with or without hair, because that would be terrible. So I just found like, oh, I'd rather just buy clothes that have short sleeves so that nobody has to look at my gross armpits. That was my thought. And I've held that and like now my forties and I've gone years now where I'm like, I don't own a razor. I've got like a, an electric one, not a close to skin one because the close to skin ones just absolutely will turn into a disaster for me. And for long periods of time, I just won't shave at all. And I don't care. And I'll walk around because thank God I married someone who loves me, whether I have armpit hair or not, and it's fine. But I then, you know, had my kid and was like, well, I don't want her to think that having hair is bad. I don't want her to just assume and grow up and feel like that's something that she has to do or that it's normal to do. Like, I don't even want her to think that it's normal. Like personally, I think it's a bad idea. Like every time I've tried to do so, it ends up ending in pain and horribleness. And then it occurs to me like the weird double standards that we have for that particular body hair, armpit hair, is that we don't think that men necessarily stink because they have armpit hair, but we think women do. Like we, we have weird lore that we pass down about why we need to do it. And it's like, we convince each other it's important, but it's not. I'm like, you know, you can wear deodorant and you're fine whether you have hair or not. It's not about stink. It's just about seeing hair in your armpit and whether that just horrifies you or not. And sadly, I feel like I've inherited a little bit of horror I don't like it about myself and I don't want that. And I'm training myself not to feel that way, but I have no examples. There's so few examples of other women wandering around with armpit hair that aren't being called like dirty hippies and like all this other kind of derogatory terms by the women who are shaving their armpits and men too, I guess. But it's interesting because I feel like I get the flack more from women or that's what I hear and that's what I'm trying to avoid, even if it hasn't been said to me personally. So it's just, it's an interesting little package. And then there's the aging as well. So it's like aging into our adult bodies with hair and how do we feel about that? So it's like we automatically have something to be upset about very early on. And I'm only going to speak to my experience as a woman because that's mine. I know men have their own as well about how they need to present themselves and all of that. But for women, yeah, it's like, don't, don't have hair, always be properly groomed. Like there's so much about our hair and how that needs to be presented and everything needs to look effortless and youthful and dewy and wonderful, except that when we are young and dewy, we're also like acne ridden and stressed out. And like, there's so many things and yet there's that standard. <laughs> so even knowing that it's a big fucking lie, I look at it and go, Oh my God, my hands look old. They look older and I don't like it. And I'm like, well, why can't I like it? What if I decided to like it? 
And currently I don't, and I'll just admit that. Like, I don't like that I can see like these big bulky veins. Why? Why is that happening? I'm like, I don't know, because you've lived a life, because you're not 12, <laughs> because you've done some stuff, your hands have seen some shit blaze. It's okay. Um, there are things that I appreciate. Like, I think I talked a while ago about calluses and how I appreciate them because they are a sign of effort and life lived and changing. So it's interesting that I'm willing to accept that, but not wrinkles for some reason, not um, a different texture or like shape of skin. Cause it's like papery. It, I guess maybe it's like this, what do they call it? A loss of collagen or a loss of something where it's like the skin is thinner on my hand. Maybe that's what's happening and it's not plump. And I look at like my forehead and go, oh, there's like these giant wrinkles. And if I catch myself at the right time of the day in the sun, like I can see like these big valleys in my, in my forehead. My God, what's up with that? And it's laughable, honestly, sometimes. Cause I, you know, I can look at my mom and be like, oh no, she's lovely. Like I, she looks great. Like, what am I even worried about? And obviously she doesn't look like she's 20. She doesn't look 40. Like she's in her sixties. That's fine. And when I've seen, you know, even older people and like pictures of my grandmother before she died, like she had a lot of wrinkles and I thought she was like the most wonderful person that I had ever known. Like I just loved seeing her face and I loved seeing her joy. And that's really what I get from seeing other people. And it's weird that we don't apply it to ourselves sometimes, or at least that's what I'm taking from my own experience is I can look at and see a beautiful person, like a beautiful soul in someone else and say like, Oh, I just love that when they smile, like their wrinkles are their smile. And yet as I start seeing, like, I have a lot of wrinkles and they're mostly like smile lines, eye crinkles and like lines on the side of my face from smiling so much. It's like, there's a wave away from like the side of my lips and like the wrinkles I think on the top of my forehead are from raising my eyebrows. Like, Ooh, I don't know try to make a sound that makes you see it like, Oh my God, <laughs> that's the shape of my face now. Why don't I consider that beautiful? Could I, can I, I want to. So I think I need to explore that more and I need to start noticing other people that might share some of my features and see the beauty in it and stop judging myself so harshly. And I would invite you to do the same. If you're struggling with some of the same things that I struggle with is to like, start looking for where are the other people who have something similar? Do they share my same face shape, my same like skin frailty? I don't know, like blurred tattoos. And can I look at them and go like, Oh yeah. Like I actually don't notice that it's not what I'm set to look for. Maybe I need to start looking for that and acknowledge that it is beautiful. Yeah. So those are my thoughts this week. It's been quite a ride. <laughs> oh, maybe I'll find something beautiful about ourselves. Maybe begin to notice our weird standards around aging and mortality and having that be obvious. And maybe it's about just our discomfort with that in general, or that we've been taught to be uncomfortable. But what if we could start to love it and appreciate it. I honestly, I would welcome hearing from people who really already do love and appreciate aging, who appreciate the visible signs, who have seen that beauty and can describe it to me and help me embrace it in a way that I've been unable to. I would actually really like that. So if you have that, that's great. Please tell me. And if you don't, let's talk about it anyway, because I think it's through talking about it that we get better at these kinds of things. I hope you have a marvelous week and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. Thanks so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and share it with someone you love and leave us a review. You can learn more and get some self-compassion tips and tricks by visiting coachwithblaze.com where you can sign up to get my free booklet on overcoming anxiety, overwhelm, exhaustion, and burnout. I'm sending you so much appreciation and love, and I'll see you next time.